Hi, I'm Thomas. This is the course Managerial Accounting, and today's lecture is CVP Analysis. CVP is Cost of Volume Profit, and in CVP Analysis, we want to understand how operating expenses behave, whether they are fixed or whether they are variable. The difference is that variable costs change when sales change, fixed costs do not. That's a bit of a simplifying assumption, but to understand the concept we can use this assumption. When sales change, some costs change. The cost of materials will change, the cost of labor involved in the process of making and selling the product will change, but our rent probably will not change. So those are some examples of expenses that do change with movement and sales and that don't change with movement and sales. And so to use a simple definition of variable and fixed costs, we'll look at the movement of sales to make that decision. In comparing fixed and variable costs in this lecture to product and period costs, which we saw in the last lecture, in CVP analysis, we're looking at expense behavior. Expenses fixed or variable is referring to the behavior of the expenses. In our product and period cost analysis, we looked at the concept of job costing, and we were in that case looking at the relationship of expenses to operations. Today, we're looking at expense behavior, again, whether expenses are fixed or variable. We have several formulas that we'll want to use in calculating and analyzing the results of cost volume profit analysis. These are the first five calculations. Contribution margin is sales minus variable costs, and we can calculate contribution margin on a per unit basis or in total, and we'll see both calculations in our examples. The contribution margin ratio is the contribution margin divided by sales, and we can get this through either the per unit numbers or the total dollar numbers. Either way, we'll get the correct ratio. Next, operating profit. This is contribution margin minus fixed costs. Break even sales in two forms. One is in units, fixed costs divided by contribution margin per unit and for break-even sales in dollars, fixed costs divided by the contribution margin ratio. When we see the examples, the sample calculations, I'll show you another way, really an easier way for you to calculate break-even sales in dollars, and then you'll have two options. Let's take a company, let's take some given information. Here we have sales price per unit, $35. Planned unit sales, 1,000 units. Variable costs per unit, $22. Fixed costs, $8,500. And target operating income, $6,000. Notice in the costs, variable costs are presented on a per unit basis. So we'll need to multiply by number of units to get to a total number. Fixed costs are already presented in total. Fixed costs per unit are typically a less meaningful type of measurement than variable costs per unit, so we're usually referring to fixed costs in total, and we refer to variable costs on a per unit basis. Okay, let's use this data set to complete our calculations. First, contribution par margin per unit. Sales price per unit of $35 minus variable cost per unit of $22 equals contribution margin per unit of $13. Next, our contribution margin ratio, the contribution margin per unit, which we just calculated of $13, divided by the sales price per unit of $35 equals our contribution margin ratio of 37.1%. And now let's go to calculate contribution margin in total and operating profit. So what we have at the bottom of the slide is 
uh, an abbreviated income statement. Sales, $35. This number is the $35 sales price per unit times the 1,000 units we were given in the data. That is $35,000. Variable costs in total are also the per unit amount of $22 times 1,000 units of planned sales and the different sales minus variable costs equals contribution margin of $13,000. Notice that this is not labeled as per unit because it isn't per unit, it is in total. Contribution margin of $13,000 minus our fixed costs which were given $8,500 equals operating profit of $4,500. So we've calculated contribution margin per unit, contribution margin ratio, contribution margin in total dollars, and our operating profit. Now let's look at our break-even calculations. First break-even sales in units. Fixed costs of $8,500 divided by contribution margin per unit, which wasn't given. This is a number we calculated, $13.00. The division gives us a break-even sales units number of $654. Now moving on to break-even sales in dollars. Fixed costs, $8,500, divided by the contribution margin ratio, also not given. This was a calculation, 37.1%, which is in decimal form, 0.371. And the division equals $22,885. Now, if you do this on your calculator, you won't get exactly $22,885. You'll perhaps get a slightly different number, because there might be some additional decimals, additional values out here beyond the number 1, and we've rounded. But the value that you get is very close, and that is an acceptable answer. Now I told you I'd give you another method to calculate break-even sales in dollars, which is a method that's more based on common sense than anything, and thus you don't need to know a formula. Break-even sales in units, which we've calculated as 654, multiplied by the sales price per unit of $35, will also give us break-even sales, and this number, $22,890, is break-even sales in dollars. Notice that there is a slight difference in our two break-even sales dollars numbers. They aren't exactly equal, but they are about equal, and the difference is due to rounding. The difference is minor, and either answer is acceptable. Let's look at our second set of calculations now. Margin of safety is an indication of how much buffer sales we have, how much extra sales we have beyond our break-even sales level. This is our sales minus break-even sales, that difference divided by sales. Target sales, this concept is, well, in calculating break-even, we don't have the goal of breaking even. We have the goal of generating profit. The break-even calculation gives us an idea of the minimum level of sales we need to cover our expenses, but we want to go beyond that. We probably have some kind of target income level that we want to achieve. So the target sales calculations will help us calculate what sales levels we need both in units and in dollars to achieve a particular target operating income number. These formulas are both very similar to the break-even sales formulas that we saw before. And so you just make one adjustment in these formulas, which is adding in target operating income and the numerator. And now the numerator for target sales and units is fixed costs plus target operating income. That sum divided by contribution margin per unit is target sales in units and in dollars, fixed costs plus target operating income. That sum divided by the contribution margin ratio will give us target sales in dollars. And 
again with target sales in dollars you can also use the shortcut that we saw with the break-even sales dollars and we'll see this with target sales in dollars as well okay so let's go back to the data set and use that data to complete these calculations first margin of safety sales price per unit of thirty five dollars times units of a thousand equals a number we've already seen total sales of thirty five thousand minus break-even sales which we calculated equals the difference between total sales and break-even sales now sales minus break-even sales which we've just calculated the difference number twelve thousand one hundred fifteen divided by total sales of thirty five thousand equals our margin of safety of 34.6 percent. What this is telling us is at our planned sales level we are 34.6 percent above our break-even sales level. So that's a, a nice cushion to have. We could have a 34.6 percent drop in sales from our planned sales level and still not be losing money. And now looking at our target sales calculations. Fixed costs of 8500 plus target operating income of 6000 gives us a subtotal of 14500 divided by contribution margin per unit, which we calculated earlier, of $13 equals target sales in units of 1115 This means that to achieve our target operating income goal, we need to sell 1,115 units of product. Now looking at the target sales in dollars calculation. Fixed cost of 8,500 again plus target operating income of $6,000 equals $14,500. And we now divide by our contribution margin ratio of 37.1%. Again, as a reminder, in decimal form, this is 0.371. We divide to get to a target sales dollar amount of $39,038. So this means that we need to sell in dollars $39,038 to be able to achieve our target operating income goal. And again, we have a shortcut. We can simply take the target sales in units number we calculated, 1115 multiply that by the sales price per unit of $35 to arrive at break-even sales in dollars of $39,025. Again, we see that there's a slight difference. These aren't equal. They're the same calculation. They're not equal. They're similar. And again, the difference is due to rounding. The difference is minor, and either value is an acceptable solution to the calculation. This ends part one of the lecture. We'll take a break here, and when we come back, we're going to continue with looking at the concept of decision-making using cost-volume profit analysis. Be sure to work through the exercise sets relating to these concepts, and I'll see you in a moment for part two of the lecture.